Hi, Vlad here, I have a new fancy light, so this video should be awesome. And today we're gonna talk about one of the core topics of Android development, intents. There are multiple types of intents and use cases, but they all have the same goal, to facilitate communication between different components in Android. In this video, we'll explore the intents in a modern Android development and see how they're used in apps. Android intents are the messages that we use to request some action from another component. They allow you to interact with components within your application, as well as interact with all the apps on your device. Think of sending an email through your favorite app or starting a service or navigating to another activity. In simple words, we have four main Android components to build our application. Activity, service, broadcast receiver, and content provider. A content provider is activated when targeted by request from a content resolver, but all the components initiated with the Android intent. There are many types of Android intent. The most important is the explicit and implicit intents. They used most of the time. However, there's also pending and sticky intents, but let's keep them for now because they are rarely used. The intent is explicit when we provide a target destination. For example, if you want to launch a specific activity or service. For the implicit intent, we don't give a specific target, but instead declare an action that we want to perform. The Android system then try to find the best suitable application to perform this action or crash if it doesn't. The main job of intents is to initiate our application components and because of this, there are mainly three primary use cases for intents. First, start an activity. With a single activity architecture approach, this use case became not so popular. But if you want to start another activity in your application, you can do it easily with intent. Just pass a context with destination activity class and you are set. Want to add some data? No problem, intent can carry some extra data. In these examples, we passed a specific target about activity, and because of this, our intent is explicit. But more often, we use implicit intents to launch other applications. For example, you can use this code if you want to create an alarm. Here, we specify the action set alarm and extra data for it. Also, notice that here we use the check with the result activity. Our application will crash if Android can find a suitable app for your action. So this check ensures that we launch our intent only if there's some alarm app that can handle it. Another use case is to start a service. Service is a component that performs some task in the background. In the old days, before Android 5.0, we used an intent to launch service, something like that. However, the current recommendation for background work is to either use Work Manager, Alarm Manager, or simple Kotlin coroutines. The last one is delivering a broadcast. Broadcast is the message that you can send to other apps or a message that you can receive from different apps in Android system. It's a kind of publish subscribe pattern where you can register your app to receive some events or send a message on some event from your app. As an example, here we manually create the intent with an action and extra data and send the broadcast. Back in the days, Android intents were used much more. We created activities and navigated between them with explicit intent or launched a service directly. But things are changing and now we have a single activity architecture and jetpack. However, intents are still an essential concept for Android development and now you know a bit more about it. See you later.